because there was a potentially huge breakthrough in energy recently. A nuclear fusion reaction at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California produced more energy than it took to generate, potentially unlocking the decades-old promise of fusion. Now, if this ever really occurred en masse, it could create nearly unlimited energy and, and I don't think this is an overstatement to say this, change the course of humanity, change the world. But it is still just a long-held promise. In the near term, if we are looking for reliable, zero-carbon-emitting energy, why aren't more people talking about nuclear power? It's actually going the other way. With many states trying to shut down their nuclear plants. California, by the way, gets about 8% of all of its electricity today from nuclear, but is still talking about shutting down the one plant which is making that 8%. That's Diablo Canyon. Let's talk more about it with Ted Nordhaus. He is founder and executive director of the Breakthrough Institute. Ted, why aren't more people talking about nuclear? Are we still, do we still have the three-mile island Chernobyl on the brain? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a little bit of that. Uh, there's uh, some three-mile island Chernobyl hangover, perhaps. Um, but, you know, I do think a lot, of, a lot more people are talking about it now as a serious solution to address energy security and climate change challenges. And as you noted, you know, California just reversed course and actually decided to keep that Diablo Canyon plant online. They say just for another five years, but I think it's probably likely it'll be longer than that because California can't keep the lights on without it. Yeah, and there was a nuclear plant near where I grew up called San Onofre, and, and that got shut down. And, I, you know, I, I never really thought much about it, I guess, as a, as a kid or a young teenager, and now it's, now it's gone. And you say, well, why can't we bring these back? And every time I get the answer, it's always people. We don't have the technicians anymore. They've retired, and no one's training to become one because they're told the industry is going away. That sounds like a dangerous spiral, Ted. Well, uh, you know, there, again, there's some truth to that, which is, you know, if you tell people for, you know, 35, 40 years that uh, the industry is a dead end and we're not going to build any more nuclear power plants, um, you know, your workforce uh, atrophies, um, your knowledge of how to build them atrophies. And so if you want to start out up again, uh, you got to you've got to be serious about building new plants. You've got to be serious about training the workforce. You got to be serious about you know, particularly after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, you got to be serious about developing uh, a fuel supply that's not dependent on the Russians. Uh, a big chunk of the U.S. nuclear fleet today uh, depends on Russian fuel. So, um, yeah, you know, you can have a, a, a really uh, robust nuclear uh, um, electricity capability, um, but you have to decide you want it. Um, and if you spend 40 years uh, with, you know, a lot of politicians and others saying uh, we don't want it. This is what you get. And now we're being told this is what you're going to get down the road. And there's a lot of issues with there's no perfect energy source. Is there, Ted? I mean, fossil fuels, they emit, they contribute carbon dioxide. They contribute to climate change and global warming. Solar panels. Well, guess what? They're made a lot of times in Uyghur forced labor camps in China Wind turbines, well, you need the wind to blow. There is no perfect energy source, but when I look at nuclear, I think this seems about as good as any if we can eliminate the Fukushima-type risk. Is that possible? Yeah, I mean, the first thing to say, the Fukushima-type risk uh, is pretty low risk. I mean, the uh, um, World Health Organization says that literally there will be no excess deaths as a result of radiation exposure from Fukushima. Uh, it was a serious industrial accident, to be clear. Uh, we have industrial accidents of all sorts all the time, and actually nuclear accidents historically have been pretty benign. So, um, but, you know, we still have this sort of outsized public fear of radiation. It's often stoked uh, by ideological interests who are very opposed to the technology. 
Um, but when you look at the trade-offs and when you look at the alternatives, to your point, nuclear is a pretty good option. Uh, it doesn't emit conventional air pollutants. It doesn't emit greenhouse gases. It has a really small land use footprint. Even the mining for the uranium, because it's such a dense energy mm -hmm. source, uh, you need a lot less mineral uh, and other mi minerals and other mining uh, to produce the energy that you get from a nuclear plant than just about any other form yeah. of energy. So for all those reasons, pretty good choice.